Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know, to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your 20th wedding anniversary and have to spend the next 20 years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. You go into your shower feeling... But as soon as you reach for the Irish Spring, your day immediately gets better. That crisp, fresh, unmistakable Irish Spring scent zings your brain and awakens your senses. So when you finally emerge from the shower, 37 minutes later, because you pay the water bill so you can stay in there as long as you want, you're ready to take on the day. And smell great doing it. Irish Spring Body Wash and Bar Soap. Fresh. Green. Irish. Shop now at Walmart. Welcome to another edition of Papa's Perspective. Brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture, the official <laughs> furniture store and official mattress partner of the New York Giants. We continue our celebration of 100 years of the New York football Giants. And the Giants captured their first Super Bowl in the 1986 season. And who better to have on than the man who presented Wellington Mara the Super Bowl trophy for the first time? You are looking live. Brent Musburger <laughs> of CBS and then later ABC joins us for this episode. Brent, thank you so much for a couple of minutes today. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to go back and, and talk about some of the great moments in the history of the NFL. And that one was, was so big. I, I must tell you about, I was disappointed in the performance of John Elway and the Broncos, but on the other hand, uh, the Giants, that defense, that defense was unbelievable. And then your quarterback, Phil Sims, has the greatest day of his career. Three touchdown passes, no interceptions, on target all day long. It was a it was a great, great performance, and Sims so richly deserved the MVP award. Brent, um, when you think about the NFL today on CBS, till this day, uh, pregame shows are trying to find the magic that you had with your group. And the NFC, after so many dormant years in the 70s, became dominant in the 80s. And that was the conference that CBS covered, you know, between the Giants and Niners and Washington and all those great teams. It was an electric time at CBS, wasn't it? Oh, it really was. Hey, you overlooked, Bob. The Dallas Cowboys. That's right. The Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and, uh, but by the mid-80s, you know, they were starting to fade a little bit. They are. They were. But, of course, it was a giant, Coach Landry, who put the show on the road. When you look back and you think about the history of the Giants, and you're doing it, and I think about Vince Lombardi and Tom Landry coming from that coaching staff, and then they went on to have such great success with, with Green Bay and Dallas. What the Giants meant. And they were part of this revival in the 80s. You mentioned it. We were extremely fortunate. First of all, I had great people, Bob, working with me. Phyllis George, obviously Dallas Cowboys. Irv Cross, who had played and who I knew at Northwestern before he went to the National Football League. Then we added Jimmy the Greek, and it was kind of, it was just kind of a mixture of personalities that worked. But then along came the NFC revival, okay? The Giants were part of it. Let's not overlook what the Chicago Bears were doing. When you take New York and Chicago, those two huge TV markets, and you have them winning football and people looking forward to their games on Sunday, it just meant so much more success for the NFL today. Okay. And the Rams, you got to remember out in Los Angeles, they were playing pretty well too. So I think we were lucky as well as being good, but certainly the Giants, so what Coach Parcells uh, meant to that team, I, I told you when you called me on the phone about this, I said, you know, there's one anecdote that I've that I've never spoken about, about that game out at the Rose Bowl. It was about, I don't know, maybe five hours before we were going to go on the air. It was very early in the morning, L.A. time. And I was going through the two locker rooms uh, to see where the stage would be set up for the presentation of the trophy. And when I went into the Giants locker room, uh, it was completely empty except for one person. And sitting all alone on a player's bench in front of a locker, reading the program for the Super Bowl, was Coach Bill Parcells. And, of course, we had covered him so much. I went over and 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 asked him, Coach, uh, 
anything I could do for you? A cup of coffee, water or anything? No, Brent. He was so nice. He said, I can't sleep the night before games, he said. So I, I just had somebody take me out real early, uh, getting ready for the game. And we talked about a lot of things, you know, about the whole year in general, his great defense. And he was so gracious, like a lot of coaches. You get them right before the game. And uh, as Lombardi used to say, the hay's in the barn. And so there's nothing more with preparation. And they're quite willing to sit there and tell you about what they think is going to happen. And that's when Bill said he thought that his defense could handle John Elway in that game. And handle him, they did. They had a safety in that game. And uh, it was just a great, great performance. Yeah, and earlier in that season, in a what was being dubbed as a Super Bowl potential preview, the Giants beat the Broncos at Giants Stadium. Uh, then there was the NFC Championship game, 17 to nothing over Washington, and the wind is blowing, and, and now you're in <laughs> Pasadena, and you know, you've got the dulcet tones of Summerall and Madden, who really were like a symphony for football at that point in time. You had the perfect recipe at CBS. Yeah, yeah, we really did. Uh, you know, John and Pat made such a great team. Um it was interesting, Bob. I, I haven't told many people this, but internally, we actually had a vote as to who John Madden was going to work with. His first year, he was very fortunate to have worked with Gary Bender, who was a very generous play-by-play -play announcer and really taught John Madden the ins and outs of broadcasting and the monitors and the replays and everything. But remember, we also had Vince Scully, as one of our play-by-play -play guys. Right, so people, for, people forget he was on the call of the catch. Yes, uh, yes. Dwight Clark. It was Vince Scully who did that game. It was his last game with us, Bob. And I, I've always thought, Vinny was a good friend, but he kept a lot of things to himself. I've always thought when we didn't put Madden with him and chose Summerall instead, that Vince said, that's it. I'm leaving, you know, and so he went on his way. And of course, one of the greatest, if not the greatest baseball announcer of, uh, of all time. But it, the reason why it worked better with Summerall, honestly, is that John Madden could have more airtime to make it as simple as possible. Uh, Vinny, a very elaborate, uh, very great with details. Uh, but Pat was much more succinct. And so John had more room during the broadcast and uh, it showed in that, in that Super Bowl and that dominant win by the uh, Giants over the Broncos. As someone who has broadcasted for as long as you have um, the feeling in New York at the time uh, when the Giants finished off that season, 14 and two in the regular season. And now here you are in Pasadena handing the Mara family, uh, Wellington Mara, the Super Bowl trophy. Many Giant fans, as someone like myself growing up in New York, hearing from my parents about the 56 team and those great teams in the early <laughs> 60s, we thought championships for other fan bases. It really was a moment that a lot of people thought they'd never see, that moment of you handing the Giants that trophy. Yeah, it was, uh, it was great because Pete Rozelle and Wellington Mara were the best of friends, okay? Uh, I would see them together at the Kentucky Derby, let's say, down in Louisville, and they were always at the same table. It meant so much for Pete to be able to hand that trophy off to Wellington, and then Coach Parcells is on the on the other side of me uh, when it happened. I, I want to tell you a little anecdote about Wellington. They're really a nice man. I really liked Wellington. He was class personified. But I was going out for a Monday night game, at Giants Stadium, and I took my wife Arlene with me. And I was doing the pregame halftime working with Jack Buck and Hank Stram on the radio on Monday nights. So I went, I said, uh, Mr. Mara, would you mind if Arlene sat in your booth with you for the game? Uh, I'm going to be over the radio side. Of pause, pause. He said, Brent, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. And I thought, well, I was you know, a little put off, but okay, you got to deal with what you got to deal with. And we found Arlene a place up in the press box where she could sit and watch the game and not bother anybody. Well, later in the season, Wellington came to me and said, Brent, I want to apologize. And I thought, what's this about? And he said, I, I know you wanted your wife to sit with me. 
And he said, the reason why I told you no is he said, I, I get a little upset during games and sometimes I'm profane and I just didn't want your wife to hear that. It's, it speaks volumes about Wellington Mara. He was, he, like I said, he was class personified and uh, just, it, it was so great. And immediately after he accepts the trophy from Pete, what does he do? He laddles it off to his coach. I mean, you know, he passes it off, passed it along. And it was a, it was a great moment in giant history. And I was proud to be part of it. Yeah. And you also were part of the, now having moved to ABC, you were part of the trophy mm -hmm. ceremony in Super Bowl 25. And that was a unique situation because of, you know, the Gulf war. And I remember just trying to get into the stadium in Tampa and the security, a whole different vibe than Pasadena, wasn't it? Oh, it really was. And, uh, in that game, because it was so close, coming down to the end and the missed field goal by the Bills, okay, uh, Commissioner Tagliabu, who had taken over from Pete, he and I were actually standing at the far end zone because we didn't know where to go, which locker room to go into, okay? So we saw from behind that missed field goal just off to the right before we went in to, uh, to give the Giants that trophy. You know, um, Brent, this is this is a lot of fun going through this. I I, I want to go back to just Super Bowl twenty one, one more time here. I mean, sure. Fan, some fans forget that it was a game at halftime. I mean, it was oh, yeah. ten to nine, and the Denver Broncos were leading, but the Giants' signature goal line stand and the Rick Carlos missed field goals, and then the second half. I think what we saw during the course of the season with the Giants being such a forceful team kind of played itself out. Yeah, exactly. You know, listen, you couldn't handle that giant defense. I mean, Lawrence Taylor, everybody talks about him, maybe the greatest of all time, but Carson and those other guys up front, I mean, they were bringing heat on every snap. I mean, remember now, they had a safety against Elway. They took him down in the end zone, and it was not easy getting John down. Uh, John was a very mobile, one of the first of the real mobile quarterbacks in the National Football League. So it was uh, the fact that the Parcells' defense didn't yield, and Sims did the rest. And, yes, it was close at halftime, but I remember John Madden. I said, John, what, what do you think? Uh, up at halftime, we were doing a commercial break just before they kicked off, and he said, Brent, I, I think the Giants are dominating defensively. And, uh, and John was so perceptive about things like that, and so he saw it coming. You know, um, for a lot of our audience who are Knicks fans, everyone remembers the Willis Reed two jumpers mm -hmm. against the Lakers, but it's Walt Frazier who wound up having a triple double with 36 points. You could almost make the analogy in Super Bowl 21. Phil Sims is 22 of 25, brilliant, but Carl Banks had one of the great individual defensive games. And if it wasn't for 22 of 25, Carl could have easily been the MVP yeah, true. of the Super Bowl. Yeah, true enough. You could have taken a couple of the defensive guys. But but Sims, listen, and Bill said it during a postgame interview when I went back and listened to it. Uh, I pointed out to him that I thought it was the best Super Bowl performance by a quarterback uh, since Terry Bradshaw's run with the Steelers. And Parcells immediately said, might have been the best ever. And I, and I think he was right. I went back and looked at some of the numbers and things that happened. I think that was, at that point, the, the greatest Super Bowl performance by a quarterback in NFL history. I just want to, in kind of wrapping up, you, you think about Bill Walsh and those Montana-led teams. You had Joe Gibbs and that team identified as the Hogs. And, of course, you had the Super Bowl shuffle Bears with the Fridge and Walter Payton and sort of that circus act. And then you had LT and the Big Blue Wrecking Crew defense. There were a lot of personalities that CBS was really oh, able yeah. to dive into, wasn't it? Oh, oh, Bob, one after another, you know? We, we couldn't wait to talk to any of those guys that you mentioned. It brings such a smile to my face to have had characters and personalities like that in the NFC. That, you know, when you go, when you really think about it uh, in the NFL today, those personalities, and even now when you mention them, football fans like you and me, brings a smile to our face when, when we remember how good these guys were. Okay. I mean, I can still remember the fridge scoring. That, listen, the fridge meant a lot to gambling in Las Vegas, uh, where I now live, because that was the first prop bet that was ever put up. It was put up by uh, 
friends of mine at Caesar's Palace. And will will the fridge score a touchdown? Okay. And there was a big number on it. All right. And guys would come in with their $20 bills and they bet the fridge is going to score. The fridge is going to score. And of course he did. You know, and it cost cost Caesars a lot of money, but then prop bets took took off from there. Mike Ditka, who's who's a very dear, dear friend of mine, many a time he has said to me, Brent, I know it was fun having a fridge score, but I made a mistake not getting a touchdown for Walter Payton. And then to this day, that's Mike's greatest regret. Uh, but for his gambling buddies, they love cashing <laughs> that ticket on the fridge score and that touchdown. Believe me, Bob. <laughs> well, Brent, um, you know, you can't tell the story of the New York Giants without obviously the players and coaches in the organization, but also the people that brought it to life and CBS and the NFL today on CBS, led by you, the standard bearer of any of these pregame shows, um, were all part of that fabric. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time to spend a few minutes with us and reminisce about that 1986 Super Bowl season and touching upon 90 and that unbelievable era in the NFC, which was a pretty special time and lives on till this day. Bob, I appreciate it. And listen, I appreciate what the Giants did for the nfl today and uh, of course i was living in connecticut with my family at the time and my son blake to this day he remains a new york giant fan and he can't wait to tell me dad i know you grew up in chicago and covered the bears but lawrence taylor was better than dick butkus <laughs> <laughs> perfect way to end it brent musburger thank you so much you got it thank you bob take care Take care. Brent Musburger joining us on this edition of Papa's Perspective, brought to you by Bob's Discount Furniture. Some people just know they could save hundreds on car insurance by checking Allstate first. Like, you know, to check the date of the big game first before you accidentally buy tickets on your 20th wedding anniversary and have to spend the next 20 years of your marriage making up for it. Yeah, checking first is smart. So check Allstate first for a quote that could save you hundreds. You're in good hands with Allstate. Savings vary. Terms apply. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Max Bankman, I'm the new doctor. Welcome aboard the Odyssey. ABC Thursdays. This ship is heaven. We're tending to our passengers' dreams. I'm in. From 911 executive producer Ryan Murphy comes a splashy new drama on a luxury cruise ship with Joshua Jackson and Don Johnson. It's your job to keep everyone alive. She's in defib. One, two, three. Clear. I have a pulse. You're going to be okay. Dr. Odyssey, Thursdays, 9, 8 central on ABC and stream on Hulu.